understanding how to add multiple strokes to type in Adobe Illustrator and get creative. Welcome everyone, I am your host, Elias Arantopoulos. All right, everyone inside Adobe Illustrator with the document open, I have already added a text layer with a bold style to it. So the effect is more pronounced. So the first thing I'm going to do is under the edit menu, I'll copy this back on the edit menu. I'll paste that in front and look inside the layers panel. Here's a duplicate sitting right on top of each other. So I would toggle off its visibility, target the very first layer, and under the object menu, I will expand its appearance and then click OK. All that does is convert the type's appearance attributes into objects. And we can see that inside this group inside the layers panel. Then under the object menu, I'll select path and then offset this path. Now this creates a replica of the object from a specified distance. Distance being the offset value from the original, adding space all around. So I can set this numerically, or I can use my mouse wheel to roll up. And as I do, the offset value increases or roll down and the offset value decreases. So in this case, I'm going to set my offset to 30 pixels and then click OK. Now with the selection tool, I will mark you select everything and I need to convert this to a single object. So under the window menu, I'll bring up the Pathfinder window. And from the shape modes, I'll use the first mode here, the unite mode, to combine all shapes into one object. And we can see that inside the layers panel. So I will lock this one and target this one here. This is type here. And under the libraries, I'm just going to assign a color of my choice. And in order to add multiple strokes, first I need to convert this to editable paths. And I can do that under the tab menu. I'll choose create outlines. Now these, as you can see inside the group, all of these are compound paths. So under the, let's see, now I'm going to create the strokes. So I'm going to use the appearance palette. I would double click on the contents. Here's the fill and there's no stroke now. So for the stroke, I'll click once and from the drop down menu, I'll assign a stroke weight to let's say 10. I'll change the stroke color to white, then add another stroke. And I can do this right here where it says add new stroke. I'll click on that. And for this stroke, I set the stroke weights from the drop down menu to let's say 20 points. I'm also going to change the color to a gradient. And to be able to see those, I will click and drag up the fill right on top here on these attributes. Perhaps for the stroke, I can bring this down to nine points and I can up this to 21. All right, that looks good. I'm going to zoom in here and then target the first compound path. So for that, I got the multiple strokes, but I would like to see the difference between this two. And I can do this if I add some effects. So inside the appearance palette, first I'll target the white stroke. And right here, I'm going to add an effect. So I'll add a drop shadow. For the drop shadow, I'll use two pixels and a blur, let's say three pixels or maybe even two. And I'll bring this down to, let's say, 60% and then click OK. For the second, for this stroke here, I'll zoom in a bit. And before I continue, first, I will target this path here, change its fill color to a color of my choice in order for us to be able to see the effect here. So I will lock this one, target this one again, this compound path. Inside the appearance palette, I'll target this stroke and add 
another drop shadow. I'll bring this down to one on the X offset and the Y offset. Perhaps a little more blur. Maybe up this just a tad. And then click OK. Another thing I can do is go to the gradient window. Here's the gradient slider. I'll double click on this color stop, change this color, and then change the type from linear gradient to radial gradient. Now I can see this green color to be more pronounced. So I like what I see. I want to keep all of these effects. So these effects, all of them have to be duplicated to the rest of these compound paths. And the easiest thing to do inside the layers panel is to first target this compound path. And then I press and hold the Alt key and then click and drag. And then just you see the plus sign and that will be duplicated to the second compound path to the third and the fourth. So that looks great. Now go ahead and target each of these, change the fill color. And first inside the appearance palette, I'll target the fill color. And for my libraries, I will assign this color my choice. I'll target this compound path, target the fill, and then change this to a color my choice. And this compound path, and change this fill color. All right, so, so far so good. Now I'm going to target this path here and inside the appearance palette for the fill, I'll add an effect and that would be an inning glow. So I set my blur to seven or eight. Perhaps the opacity can be just a little bit slower to let 70 and then click OK. All right, so in order for us to see this even more, I'll go ahead and add a background color. So I will select, I'll get the rectangle tool and then click and drag to create a rectangle shape. I'll press the letter D on the keyboard to set the default colors. None for the stroke. And for the fill, first I'm going to click and drag this at the bottom of the layer stack. I'll double click to rename this to BG. And let's see, I'm going to set like a, a gray color here and double click on the color picker. Perhaps I can just use this color of my choice. I'll click OK. So I'm also going to lock this one so I don't accidentally move it. Things are looking great. I just have one more step to go to make things even more creative for these multiple strokes. Continuing with these stroked shapes and get a bit creative, I'll add some straight lines within those compound paths. So with nothing selected, I'll grab the pen tool. I'll click once to create the first anchor point, press the shift key and click and create the second anchor point. And now I have a straight segment. No need to have any fill color. I just need to have a stroke. So inside the properties panel, first I'll change the color of the stroke to white. I'll up the point size or the font weight to 1.2 points. And then under the object menu, I will expand its appearance. I'll click OK and look inside the layers panel that created a group. No need for that. So I'm just going to click and drag this path outside the group. Here it is. I'll position this, let's say around here and create a bunch of duplicates. And for that, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut. Alt Shift Option Shift. Continue creating more duplicates. I like so. So with the selection tool, I will mark you select those. And perhaps I can just nudge this done using the down arrow key. And then under the object menu, I group those. I'll double click, rename these two lines. That is the first group. But I have four shapes altogether. So I will click and drag this 
right on top of the plus icon to create the first duplicate, another duplicate, and another duplicate. And then I'm going to make those invisible and just work with these group of lines. I'll target this one and then click and drag this and bring this under this compound path. All right. Now I'm going to create a clipping mask, which will allow me to create a mask by clipping one or more layers to another layer group. So to create a clipping mask, the first object in the layer, in this case, that would be the first object, it will mask everything that is a subset of that layer. In this case, the lines is a subset of the compound path. Now, before I do anything, when I create the clipping mask, the lines will be masked inside this compound shape, which means I will lose that path. In this case, first I will duplicate it and then create the clipping mask. So I will click and drag this right on top of the plus icon to create a duplicate. I'll make it invisible. And then with the shift key, I'll target this too. And under the object menu, I select clipping mask and make. Here it is. Now the lines have been clipped inside this compound shape. Now I'm going to make this one invisible and then click and drag this clip group right on top of this compound path. And here it is. Now we've got the lines clipped inside the shape. We also have the shape as well. I'll do the same for this year for the second compound shape here. It's going to move them right there. Click and drag those under this compound path. Duplicate that, make it invisible, shift and target this too under the object menu, clipping mask and make. And I'm going to bring this clip group right on top this compound path and make this one visible. There we go. The process is exactly the same for the remaining of shapes, creating clipping masks within those compound paths.